Hey everyone, welcome back to Unbiased Magic Reviews. Thanks so much for tuning in and spending a few moments of your day with me. Today I have a comparative magic review for you guys. You may remember that this is the review series I started a few months ago where I take a look at two magic products that are essentially the exact same effect, compare them and give you guys some recommendations. Today I'm taking a look at Wes Isley's flip and comparing it with John Allen's down to one. Now the main reason I decided to do this review was because this past week I noticed that flip is trending in the number two spot on Penguin Magic. You may remember seeing this on Penn and Teller's Fool Us about two years ago when Wes Isley did Fool Penn and Teller and John Allen developed his routine as a way of trying to improve flip um, because he wanted to uh, come up with a way of doing the effect where um, you could have the coin flipped and then you ask the spectator to make a decision after you've already caught the coin um, and so that was really how john allen's effect really came into play here now in terms of the controlled coin flip um, I was first exposed to this almost 20 years ago uh, when I picked up Jerry Kosnitsky's Heads or Tails and I think that cost me around $10 at the time. It was a uh, controlled coin flip that was really based on sleight of hand. It required a little bit of practice to learn. Still really good to this day, so if you're interested in this plot, you may want to try to hunt that down and see if you can find it. But if you do some searches here on YouTube, you'll find a myriad of videos that teach you how to do a controlled coin flip as well. So I'm going to first talk about the similarities of these two effects and the premise, and then we're going to get into the differences between them and my recommendation of why I recommend one over the other. So the premise is really simple. You introduce a prediction to, uh, and you have somebody hold it or, or you put it out and then you have your spectator stand up and they're going to choose either heads or tails and through a series of coin flips whoever gets it wrong sits down until finally you've whittled down the audience to one person you can open up the prediction and show that it is an accurate description of the one person that's still standing like the last man standing type of effect and i do remember i think it was ken dine that put out on his Penguin lecture back in 2014. He was like the first one to lecture on this type of effect. But instead of coin flips, he was really doing coin rolls on a table. Um, and so these two effects I'm comparing today, flip and down to one, they look identical from the spectator's point of view. And so the similarities of these are that the process is exactly the same in both of these effects. Um, the limitation of the coin is pretty much the same in both of them as well. Um, in flip, you do have to use a specific type of coin. You can't just use any coin. So in the U.S., you could use like a half dollar or an Eisenhower dollar. If you live outside of the U.S., you're probably going to have to find a coin that meets the specifications that will work with it. So you can't just use any coin. And in John Allen's effect, even though you get a manufactured coin that has a red and black side it's designed that way so that way the audience can see it from a distance you can use a regular coin but again it cannot be just any coin it also has to meet certain specifications that's the real reality of it because um, you can't use a really small coin is what i'm trying to get at there so that is the reality of the limitation of the coins now both of these effects are designed to be done either close up or on stage um, and both of these effects do use very minimal sleight of hand. So those are really the similarities of them. Now the, the differences is where this thing gets really uh, interesting. Um, and I'm going to be giving you guys my recommendations as I go through these differences. That way I'm not redundant. My recommendation is that I would recommend that you just pick up Wes Isley's flip and that's for the following reasons and it's really the really the big differences is that first off flip is only 20 bucks whereas uh, down to one is 65 dollars so it's a lot more expensive for virtually the exact same thing i think that flip is a lot easier to learn you'll learn it in like 10 minutes 
whereas down to one may take you a little bit longer to learn unless you've done sleight of hand with coins, in which case it will be very easy to learn. Um, but in terms of performing it, I think that flip is just, it just edges it out because there's less hand motion. And when I say that there's less hand motion, it's because the motion is done under the larger motion of slapping the coin down on your hand. Whereas in the John Allen version, there's a little bit more hand motion and so it could look a little bit more suspicious just depending on how good your sleight of hand is. And because of that, I think that the Wes Isley version is just superior. In my own road testing of these, I found that absolutely no one really questions the Wes Isley version. Um, the John Allen version, I really didn't have too many issues with it, but then again, I was a little bit more self-conscious because I kind of knew what I was doing. In terms of the angles, the Wes Isley version is far superior because there's no angle restriction. In the John Allen version, down to one, if you do this like close up, you can't have anyone standing behind you or they'll kind of get an idea of what's going on. So that's another limitation of this. The effect down to one has an extra kicker in the prediction. You're actually also predicting the last flip. Um, but does that really matter? Um, the trade-off is that you have to have a gaffed envelope with you, which I'm not really a big fan of. Um, in flip, there are absolutely no gaffes, and you can leave everything with the spectator when you're done. So again, another reason why I would recommend flip over down to one. Both of these effects, they tell you to carry multiple predictions, kind of in case you need to, but flip does give you some outs that you don't get with down to one, which is another reason why I would recommend flip over down to one. So those are probably the major differences between these and the major reasons why I would recommend that you just take a look at flip. If you do pick it up, after you do learn it, you might be like, oh my God, that's so simple. Like you may have a little bit of buyer's remorse. I initially did, but the reality was that after I used it and I realized how practical this was, then that kind of like went away. I actually do believe that it really is worth picking up. And if you are interested, the main way that I perform it now is that I give out a prediction um, and then I have a piece of paper that has some options on it and I'll have my spectator assign heads or tails to the options. Like for instance, one option may be like North Pole or Central America or something like that. And they'll choose heads or tails for them. And then after they've chose heads or tails for the different options, then I'll do the coin flip and I'll have the spectator circle whatever, whatever the um, result is. And then when they open up the prediction, it's a completely ridiculous prediction, which will say like, I had a feeling you would be going to the North Pole with a surfboard to eat enchiladas or something totally ridiculous like that, which usually gets a real laugh. And so I think it's a very versatile effect, very practical and something that you're gonna use a lot and it will fool everyone. I mean, it fooled Penn and Teller, right? Um, so it's definitely something you should take a look at. For completeness sake, I'm just gonna mention that if you do have um, Unveil by Manos Kartsakis, you will notice that the first effect in the book is called Brick Opener. And that uh, effect is very similar to Flip. Um, the difference is that the mechanics are a little different because you're catching the coin in a totally different way and you're revealing it in a different way. Um, and so I just mentioned that in case you wanna check that out. Um, the presentation and effect uh, that Manos gives you is very interesting, especially for those people that are into stage mentalism. You may wanna take a look at that. You may even wanna pick that up because it may be something that sounds interesting to you. Anyway, that's what I really wanted to talk about today and compare with you guys, especially since this effect is trending in the number two spot on Penguin Magic. So it's something that if you don't have, you may want to take a look at. I've actually really had a lot of fun with it. And as I mentioned, it's definitely worth picking up. I think that John Allen tried to do, make some improvements, but unfortunately, I think it just falls a little short and I don't think it's better than the Wes Isley version. Anyway, thanks so much guys for tuning in to my magic reviews.